Thanks for tuning into our podcast. We love having you here, and it's our mission to bring you all the latest and greatest tips, skills, and know how to make you the best that you can be. We know that you have it in you, and we're going to show you how. Now, now let's get started. Happy once again. This is Omopola Steven, the host of The Backstory with Omopola Steven. On The Backstory, we like to focus on what has not worked and what will make it work. Focusing on government and politics and other subtopics on the government politics, like the environment, society, and culture. Today, I have managed Agual, who is a global thought leader in startups and AI. He's also an elite tech consultant and business mentor. He's there on the show today. Now, to talk about AI and how it's going to change the world. Welcome, Manoj. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thanks for joining me on the show. Uh, Now we know what we'll be talking about AI. AI is come to stay, and we all agree to that. Um, But really, talking about AI reading our mind, is it time for us to begin to worry? Well, uh, we are already surrounded by AI. Uh, So a lot of people have this misconception that AI just showed up on the scene uh, and exploded. But AI specifically has been around since the 70s. And personally, I have been working with AI for about 15 years now. And regarding uh, the ability of AI to read the minds, again, it's, it's already happening. For the past three presidential elections, um, starting from President Obama, um, a lot of the elections are now using AI and data science to win or lose elections. Uh, The news that we read, uh, they're all controlled by AI. Uh, You know, this uh, interview that we are recording, this video uh, recording is being optimized by AI. So if if we take out our smartphones, all everything on that device is controlled by AI. So everything is already uh, sort of, you know, uh, uh, is is already affected by AI. But what happened was uh, in 2022, when chat GPT was released, now everyday people, even people who don't have technology background, they can use AI, they can make sense of it, they can take it, take advantage of it. Uh, reading uh, the mind, like it's see AI and our mind is is basically a continuum of the same thing. So the way that we think, that the way that we talk, the 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 content that we put out there, that is the raw material for AI or Chat GPT or similar platforms to learn from that data. And then when we ask some questions, when we get some output from that AI, that is feeding back into our mind. So it's like a two-way street that's happening. AI is uh, feeding on the data that we produce, and we are using the data that AI gives us to um, expand our mind. Uh, Really? Now, talking about AI and reading our mind, uh, do you think that AI can really uh, take the place of the man? Now, I'm asking these questions because I I have experienced some lapses in AI. Can you share your thoughts? I don't think any technology can replace human beings. See, I believe that um, human beings so far, we have identified ourselves with our ability to solve problems. So we have valued our intellect, our IQ, right? But as the machines become more and more intelligent, the machine is going to have an IQ of about a thousand. So there is no way to compete with the machine, but what is left is our emotional intelligence. And that emotional intelligence is not going to be something that can be replicated by a machine. So if you if you listen to somebody as a human being, you can connect with them at an emotional level. You can understand their humanity. You can understand, uh, you know, what what feelings are they feeling. That that is not something that a machine can replicate. Right. So, um, what was the meditation and AI? What do they have in common, really? 
See, as I said, so what we are talking about is is our human mind and meditation is a, a, a tremendous way to really understand your own mind. Um, a lot of what we experience in the world, a lot of the thoughts, a lot of actions we take, they are actually controlled by our subconscious mind. And with AI, uh, you know, and, and you know, I, I've been meditating for decades, uh, but when I talk to a lot of people, about meditation, a lot of people say, I cannot meditate because I don't have time or, you know, my mind is too busy. So now with AI, I can give you this exercise. You can try it on your own and the audience can try it. Um, it's, it's, I call it the magic wand uh, effect. So uh, use AI. So let's say, you know, you want to accomplish something in the next 30 days. So don't make it a very large goal, like, uh, you know, don't make it something that you want to achieve in your lifetime, but something simple. Let's say you want to sign a deal or you want to visit uh, your parents or you want to take a trip uh, with your family in the next 30 days. So use AI to write a detailed description of what that experience was like. And use AI to write it, write a story, detailed story about this experience as if it has happened in the past and write it in the first person. So when you write this whole detailed story, AI will give you that uh, uh, detailed scenario, how it has unfolded, read it out to yourself multiple times for the next several days. And the feelings and emotions you will experience while reading this story is basically very close to what meditation is. So once you start to understand how our mind works, how our thought patterns work, how our thought patterns control our reality, and how AI can really help you create some vivid thoughts, some very detailed uh, uh, thoughts in, in your mind, that's when you can realize the, the connection between meditation and AI. Does it make sense? Oh, really, it does, but uh, is this something that we need to acquire or is it, is it innate in us that we really need to harness? We all have it. The, the problem is that we are not um, good at communications. We are not expressing uh, good at expressing our thoughts, even to ourselves. So if I talk to somebody and I say, okay, what is your goal in life? They will say, I want to make a million dollars. But when I ask them, okay, what are you going to do with those million dollars? Um, most people have no answer. Even if they do have an answer, they will say, okay, you know, I'll, I'll go on a vacation, I'll buy a home, I'll buy a car. And after that, nothing. They have no uh, clarity on what they want to experience in life. So that ability is innate in us, but without these tools, without these guidance, without these frameworks, most people don't use that ability. All right. Now, since so talking about the mind, uh, how can we use the mind, the power of the mind to achieve anything? Now, how possible is that? See, our mind is the main, the main uh, uh, driving force uh, with, uh, uh, for anything that we achieve in life, anything that we experience in life. And the problem is that um, the way that we have been conditioned by society and the way the education system has been set up, we are not uh, generally allowed to think independent thoughts. And so then what we do is we we try to confirm with the rules that has been laid that have been laid out by society, and we minimize our potential. We try to follow other people's uh, life pattern. So let's say if I want to become successful, then generally people will say, oh, my next door neighbor is successful. I will do whatever they are doing and then try to reach success. But the, the fact that um, um, you really need to understand your own potential, your own passion, your own path. And when you do that, you can utilize the power of your mind to uh, create that life for you. Um, and so, so the power of mind is, is paramount. That's everything in this world. And if you can understand it, if you can harness it, then you can achieve uh, anything in life. Oh, really? Thanks for sharing your thoughts, uh, my new, uh, Now, I'll talk, I'll, I'd like us to talk about neurodiversity. Uh, 
what's the goal in achieving success? Tell me more. Yeah. See, the thing is, um, if you are working on achieving something significant, we have to realize that you cannot achieve anything without the help of other people, without a great team, without, uh, you know, people with complementary skill sets helping you. And so when uh, you want to surround yourself with these people who can help you, you also don't want them to have the same thought pattern, the same background, the same um, uh, temperament, the same uh, ability to solve problems, because that will create a group thing that will just not uh, give you enough uh, diversity in your thought patterns to find some blind spots in your thinking. But when you have people from various backgrounds, from various uh, life experiences, even from different parts of the world, they bring a different perspective on every problem. And when you have multiple uh, opinions, uh, the when you take the best of all the solutions that people bring to you to the table, that solution is going to be much more effective, much more efficient than if you have a solution from people who think alike, who look alike, and who have the same background. They will only be thinking about their own point of view. But when you have neurodiversity, you will be looking at it from multiple angles and you, you, you will find success much easier, faster. All right, uh, Manoj, um, i just like us to quickly go back to AI and government. Uh, I know that's very important. Uh, uh, what do you think is controlling whom at this time? And not, also, do you think that AI is ready? Um, do you think that the world is ready um, for AI to open the global economy? Well, who is controlling who is uh, is a very difficult question. But uh, if you read some uh, statistics, you will see that AI is um, is actually disrupting every industry, every country. And China is number one in adopting AI in every aspect of their economy. So uh, you just have to look at the publicly uh, uh, available information. Um, uh, countries in uh, Asia, specifically, China, as I said, China, Taiwan, uh, Vietnam, India, uh, in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia, UAE, these countries are adopting AI at a rapid, rapid pace, and they are modernizing their economies. And in terms of AI, yes, it is, as I told you, AI is already shaping our economy. Um, as uh, you know, uh, Apple is, um, I think, three trillion dollar company now. Um, and how did they become so wealthy is because of AI, because, uh, you know, their uh, iPhone platform, the apps, all of that is uh, is optimized by AI. If you look at uh, the richest person in the world, Elon Musk, for example, um, Tesla car uh, company is AI company. Uh, his rocket company, SpaceX, is an AI company because AI is used to land those rockets in the middle of the ocean. Um, if you talk about Jeff Bezos, you know, Amazon is an AI company. So if you look around, all these successful people have become successful because of AI. So yes, definitely, AI is ready to disrupt economies and help people make a lot of money. Those who will take notice and take advantage of this um, this technology uh, wave that is that is upon us? All right. Thank you once again for that. Uh, do you have any projects uh, in the pipeline or any interesting news you like to share with my audience? Yes, we we work with the various clients, small and big, who want to implement AI. We are helping uh, you know various. Uh, businesses. One is an online music school. Another one is a Fortune 500 company who want to implement AI. Another one is an accounting company who want to use AI to automate their business. Another one is a marketing company who want to use AI to be more productive. So there are so many examples of uh, companies that we have worked with to implement solutions in their businesses. All right. Wish you best of luck in the projects you're about. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.
All right. So what parting word do you like to share with my audience? Maybe about AI or any other uh, information? Say that again. Can you repeat the question? Uh, what parting word do you like to share with my audience? Probably about yeah. AI or any other uh, motivation you like to share. See, um, I'll share a few um, statistics. So the IBM CEO has said that AI is going to add about $10 trillion to the world economy by 2030. So the world economy right now is about $96 trillion, which means that AI is going to add 10%, more than 10% to the world economy in the next seven years. And I will also share another statistics or a quotation by Peter Diamandis, who is one of the leading uh, scientists in the world and uh, entrepreneur. He has said that by the turn of this decade, again, by 2030, in the next seven years, there's only going to be two type of businesses. One who is using AI and embracing AI, and another one who's out of business. So that's the extent of opportunity and that's the extent of how stakes are high for people to understand this technology and use this technology to their advantage. Absolutely, absolutely. We'll be looking into that. Thank mm -hmm. you for sharing your thoughts uh, on the show, Manoj. Any social media handles? I know that you have. You can share your social media handles and also your website. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the best thing is uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is where I'm most active. Just uh, let I me know, know that you heard me on this uh, podcast and uh, what are you trying to do and how can we help you achieve those goals? Absolutely. Thank you once again, Manu Jaguar. You're a global thought leader in startups and AI. Also a business uh, mentor and an elite tech consultant. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. But now AI Absolutely. is going to change the world going forward. I wish you the best of luck once again, all the projects that you're back about. Thank you. Same to you. Thank you so much. All right. Now, if you'd like to catch up with any missed episodes of The Backstory uh, with the Mobile Last TV, you can do so on any podcast distribution platforms or any cross promotion platforms that you bump into online. And do have an amazing time. Listen to experts and professionals share disruptive mindset conversations on topics on the government, politics, society and culture and the environment and also technology. Now, I need you to stay safe and be good at Absolute.